Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what we have before us here is our new multi-gas detector at the Elkin Fire Department. We have three of these along with a calibration kit for them. And we bought one and placed one on each of our major apparatus. So there's one of these on engine 20, there's one on engine 21, and there's one on ladder 20. This is the MSA Altair 4X. And it is a new device to us, but it's not new to the market. They've been out for a while. They're pretty durable and they work well. That's the reason why we bought these. And hopefully you'll get a chance to use it. But if you're going to need to know how to use it, then you also need to know how it works and how it's made. And that's what this video is about, to give you a very basic summary of this detector. Before we learn how to turn it on and how it works and all, let's look at the outside of it. You can see it's protected by a pretty resilient rubber case. So if you drop it, hopefully it won't break so much. If we flip it over to the back, we're going to start there. And if we look at the bottom of the back, we can see there's a cutout right here. See the cutout? And that cutout has inside it a little place where there are two copper connectors. This is where the thing recharges. We have cables that slide into here, and that's what recharges the battery. Most of the time, though, we're not going to have it hooked up to the cables. That includes when you go into an area that you need to monitor. You won't have a cable that reaches out to the truck. So you need to kind of keep this clear and protected. Try not to get anything stuck in there. Try not to break any of this. It's made pretty well, but take care of it. Label on the back. Woohoo. You can read it anytime you like. The other important thing about the back, though, are the two methods that we have of attaching this to us or to our equipment. We have a ring that we can clip this to so that if you've got, let's say, a spring clip on, uh, on your gear or something, then you can clip it to that D-ring. We also have an alligator clip. So you can take a piece of webbing or whatever you might have. That could be the SCBA harness that you fit right in there and then you clip it down. Right now we're keeping these clipped on the officer's sun visor in each of our trucks. So if you need to know where this is on the apparatus right now, you can find it clipped to the visor. And in order to get it loose, you'll have to trip the little lever there so you can open that up. And then you can close it back. Okay, looking from the top down. Move the ring out of the way. And we see two little clear windows right here. These two windows house some lights. If this thing is in alarm, if there's something wrong, or if there's something that needs to be checked, then there are red lights inside those two windows that'll be blinking to let you know. This particular window, the one on the right hand side, if I'm holding this thing upright, like so, that window has a green light in it also. If you've got the monitor turned on, if you've got the detector turned on, and it's doing its thing like normal, then every once in a while you'll see a green light blink in there. So if you see a green light blinking in this thing, that's the sign to you that this thing is on. You don't need it on. Turn it off. Okay, so now looking at the front, and we'll start at the bottom because this is kind of important. Down here, that's the name of the thing. That's also our little hint to let us know that we've got it turned the right way so that when we read stuff on the display, it'll make sense. Keep the label and the digital display at the bottom because if you flip it like this, then when you try to read it, everything will be upside down and it will make no sense to you. It'll work either way, but you can't read it and make sense out of it if you don't flip it so that this is facing the bottom. Display, then above that, three buttons. Button in the middle, looks like a zero and a one. That's our power button. This is how you turn it on and off. Does a couple other things too. We'll talk about that more later. Then to the left and right of the power button are the only two buttons on this thing other than the power button. Down and up. Down, up, down, power, up, up, power, down. There, simple as that. Just above the power button is a little hole. This hole is where the sound comes out of the detector. So if the thing is beeping or an alarm, it's going to come out of there. Sometimes we want it to beep. A time when we don't want it to beep is when we're trying to talk to someone on the radio. So if it's beeping because it's in alarm or something else is going on, do yourself a favor and take your thumb or your finger and cover that hole while you're talking on the radio. And what that will do is it will mute the sound enough where you can carry on a conversation. That is important. Just above that, we have three little louvered areas with filters behind them. This is where 
the air comes into the detector to be sampled. The sensors are behind these. So this is where the air comes in. If you cover that up, it won't be able to breathe and it won't be able to tell you what it's reading. So keep that in mind. Okay, so that's the very simple anatomy of this thing. And so now we'll talk about turning it on. Hey, the power button is probably what's going to do that, right? Power button in the middle, remember, zero and one. So if I push that, it comes on. And it tells me who made it. It tells me what model it is. And it starts working through the process of what we call sensor discovery. See, sensor discovery. This is where the monitor, the detector, is determining which sensors are, are inside it and making sure that they work correctly. So it's going through that process now. You can also see there is a blinking hourglass at the top of the display letting you know, hey, I'm taking my time doing something, so I will not be ready until I'm done. And then next to that is the battery display. The more bars there are, the more battery you have. Right now it's completely full. Okay, so it's found its sensors, and now it starts working through its alarms. It'll show you what, what levels that it gets to when it goes to alarm, whether it goes low or high. There are the high alarms. And then the STL alarm and the TWA alarm. Maybe we'll talk about those more later. It shows us what level it calibrates at, what time it is, what date it is, and when it was last calibrated. These are supposed to be calibrated every 30 days. This one was calibrated on the 10th, so it's due in 12 more days. And now the display comes up asking us for an FAS. We'll talk about that more in a few minutes. You can let that thing keep blinking, and eventually it'll go away, just like you saw. We'll talk about FAS in just a minute. But you can see the monitor will work even without FAS. It's functioning right now. So right now it's showing you the, the readings that it's picking up for each of the four sensors it has. And you'll also notice, because it's on, every once in a while the green light will blink. It just blinked a minute ago. And in a minute it'll blink again. I'm going to wait on that. Be patient. See? Green light. Okay, so that tells you it's on. In the display, we show the four sensor readings that it has. Upper right, O2. O2 means oxygen. So in this block underneath O2, it's telling me that the air it's picking up right now is made up of 20.8% oxygen, which is good. 20.8 means I can breathe and not run out of breath. I get the oxygen I need. So that's a good number. Okay, next to that is Comb X. <laughs> what that stands for is combustible or explosive. In other words, it's reading the level of combustible or explosive gas in the air. And it's reading it based on how much pentane that it reads. Pentane is a test gas for this particular monitor. So if it were picking up pentane, you would see numbers going up there. If it were picking up any other combustible gas, such as gasoline or methane, then you'd also see those numbers go up. It would still go up but it would show you how much pentane is in the air or what it thinks is pentane. If we're supposed to try to figure out how much methane is in the air, we need a handy little chart to do that. So that's just letting you know. This reads any combustible or explosive gas, but it compares it to pentane. Okay, at the bottom, CO, carbon monoxide, not carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is CO2. This thing reads carbon monoxide, which is CO, and it reads it there in parts per million. It also reads in parts per million H2S. H2S stands for hydrogen sulfide, which is a very toxic gas. So H2S and CO at the bottom, O2, oxygen, and combustible or explosive gases at the top. Okay, so this is what it looks like in good normal situations. Let's see if I can put it in an abnormal situation. Let's see what it does. This is what it does. You can see right now it's reading 18.8% O2. Now that's starting to come up now that I've returned it to normal air. And you can see the little lights on the thing are blinking red and it's making noise. If I cover up the hole, it still makes the noise, but it makes it much quieter. So if I'm trying to talk on the radio while this thing is alarming, I do this because otherwise all you'll hear is the beeping. Okay, so you notice, things are back at normal now. I'm at 20.8. Whenever this thing goes into alarm, it stays into alarm until you tell it to hush. So how do you tell it to hush? The up button. 
the up button tells it, forget about the alarm, you're back to normal. So if I hit the up button, it says, I've reset alarms. Let's do that again. Okay, reading of 18.6 at this very moment in terms of uh, oxygen. Even though it starts to increase and gets back to normal eventually, this thing will not stop alarming until it gets back to normal and until I hit the reset alarm button. Okay, so that's how to get the alarms to be quiet. Remember, even after it returns to normal, the alarms will not be quiet until you tell it to reset. Keep that in mind. Okay, so let's talk about a couple more things on this. First of all, I need to show you how to turn it off. So you know the power button turns it on. And I did that by just bumping it. Well, right now the unit is on. If I just bump the power button now, the light comes on. That's real handy for night, but it doesn't turn the thing off. So if I want to turn it off, I have to hold the power button down for three full seconds. If I hold it down for less than three seconds, it will not turn off. <laughs> How do you know that you've held it down for three seconds? Because as you're holding this thing down, it's going to beep, and all the little red lights you saw in alarm mode up here and down there are going to blink. One, two, three. There you go. And now it's off. As soon as I get the little off message, I can let go of the button. And now it's off. Okay. One last thing that I want to show you on how to use this. And that's fresh air setup. You remember when I started this thing up a few minutes ago, it popped up with the letters FAS and then a question mark. It only did it for a few seconds after I started it up. And what it's doing there is it's asking me, are you in fresh air? Because if you're in fresh air, the monitor will clear itself out if you tell it to. In other words, it'll set itself at zero. It'll forget where it's at, and it'll make sure that all the readings that it has are reading normally. Okay, so if I start it back up, it goes through the process again. tells me who made it, what model it is, what software edition it is. It checks its sensors once more. When it's done with sensor discovery, then it goes through the process of showing you what the alarms are set at. I'm waiting. <laughs> then it tells you what day and time it is. And then it tells you how long it is until it needs to be calibrated again. Still waiting on sensor discovery. There we go. Now it knows what sensors are in there. Okay, it's done testing alarms. Now it goes through the time and date and the calibration information. And now it says Cal due in 12 days. And then it asks FAS. If I'm not in clean air, I don't do anything. But if I'm in clean, fresh air, then I hit the power button. And it says FAS pass. Again, what FAS does is it compares what the, mo what the uh, systems are reading to what is supposed to be zero. And if everything's good, then it says, I pass. Okay, so those are the most basic things about this detector. And I hope I've made you familiar enough with it that you could use it on a normal basis. If you have any questions, see me or one of our senior officers with the department. I'm going to turn this thing off. And I'm going to wish you a good rest of the day. Thanks.